to do introductions. Uh, hi, my name is, is Elliot. Um, uh, full disclosure, I'm involved in the pole dancing industry and I've taken pole dancing lessons, but it's not what I would call, consider myself a, a pole dancer. Um, although, uh, it, Destiny, the other person in Polepedia, is starting to try to drag me over. I know that she uh, practices and uh, does a lot of exercises with her family and her dad. Uh, they do pole abs together. It's a very oh. odd kind of family bonding that, that goes on. <laughs> and then knowing he goes <laughs> off and brags about it. And I'm here with, go ahead. So who are you? Tell me about you. Hi, my name's Jenny. Um, I am the, I guess, owner. That's a weird thing to say. I'm the owner of Jenny's Pole Studio. Um, I am based in Norwich, uh, which is a very small, well, not a very small, but a, a small-ish town uh, in the okay. east of England. Um, mm -hmm. And if you don't know where the east of England is, um, I'm about uh, two hours northeast of London. Yeah. Um, and there's not a lot of pole studios here, actually. Um, I opened up my studio in January. Uh, oh, I, congratulations. How yeah, was that? Thank you. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, and I was lucky enough to be featured in our local newspaper. Um, they did a little article on me and sent out some photographers and, and everything. How uh, did you uh, get that, that, that article? In? And, and furthermore, what made you even want to open up your own studio? <laughs> it's not like you wake up one day and you're like, eh. I think I'm just going to open up a pole dance studio and then, then you, you knock it out by Tuesday by end of business. <laughs> um, from the, like, from what my students, the way my students talk about, you would think that that's what happened. Um, <laughs> so basically I started pole dancing, um, in Tucson, Arizona, where I'm from, uh, in 2014. So almost six years ago. Um, oh, wow. So I've been pulling for a while now, and I think around the year and a half, two year mark, I really wanted to become an instructor. Um, and an opening actually became available at my studio. Um, but I, at that point, had applied for my master's degree and I was planning on moving to the UK. So mm -hmm. it wasn't a great time, um, unfortunately. <laughs> but well, it's great. But you had the bug in you. I did, I did, yeah. <laughs> Everything, like, I think. I was encouraged by some of my instructors, like uh, per one particular instructor kind of early on to be like, you should teach, you should teach. Cause she obviously knew a little birdie had told her that a position was becoming available. Um, and so, yeah, I just kind of had it in my head, like, oh, I could be a teacher. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, um, I moved to the UK and uh, one of the first things I did with my student loan money was I signed up for an instructor course. I signed up for two. Oh, um, really? But not yeah. specific or? Yeah. So um, I trained with Spin City um, to do oh. their beginner and their intermediate pole instructor courses uh, and did both of those. It took me a while to get certified because I, there wasn't any place where I could really um, like do my assessment I had to go down to Spin City's um office basically uh right which is sort of southwest of London uh, in Newbury uh and I had to um do my first test there and then the second one I was able to um gather up some people basically at the local poll society so like the university poll club basic uh basically and um and uh, do one with like do my second one with them Actually, Destiny and I, uh, I believe, visited that place uh, just this oh. year. Um, uh, outside of Polpedia, uh, we do a lot of online marketing. That's uh, <laughs> that that's our, our main bread and butter. I'm the I'm the technical one who geeks out, and she's the one who can pump out a thousand words in twenty minutes, and I don't know how. I just sit there <laughs> with my eyebrows up and keep on making sure she's hydrated, handing her water and snacks as needed. Just you definitely like get like hunched over the computer, just like yes, this is it. Um... Yeah, right, exactly. exactly. I'm just like, hey, Destiny, what are you writing about? Oh, ginseng. I'm like, <laughs> okay. So did you hear about <laughs> neat things that they're doing with H2 tags? And then, then it, it, it works. It works in its, uh, its own chaotic way. But we were over in, in London for business. Um, I, I was chief growth officer of, of a large SEO company that's uh, spread around the world. So they imported me. So, of course, the first thing we had to do was find all the different pole dance studios in London to visit them because it's such a hub. 
Yeah, um, there's so much there. It's great. We we went by and high fived everybody. What was your your experience with it? I mean, I know you did Spin City, but obviously that's not where you ended up. Uh, being over in East England. So after, how long did the instructor courses take you? Um, so they're two day courses and then you have like up to a year to, um, to do your assessment. And that was, that was a couple of years ago now. So that was in 2016, 2017 that I did those. And at the time, yeah, you had to either submit your assessment by video um, and it's just a video of you teaching a poll class um, or you had to uh, pay to do it in person. Um, my instructor uh, who works with me, she recently did her beginner training with Spin City, and they actually test you on the second day. Um, they do the assessment with you on the second day, so you teach an hour-long class to the other people in your in your training. And how, how long are, is, uh, how many hours per day? So hers was shorter than mine because obviously they have to spend time like doing each other's lessons. Of course. Um, but mine was 16 hours altogether. So it was like two eight hour days, which even though it's like the first one is beginners, like it absolutely wrecks you because you're sitting there like you're doing like 18 million chair spins and like all of the right. stuff. So by about <laughs> the second day, you're just like, can't move my arms and <laughs> my head. Um, <laughs> So every time you drop something on the ground for the next uh, couple of days, you're like, no, no, don't make me bend. No. Uh, I stayed in an Airbnb. For the uh, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I think I'm, uh, you're breaking up a bit. I'm going to restart this. Like, I did not mean to basically, but this is the first one I stayed in a hostel, and um, <laughs> I was really, really oh, action and see if that helps. Okay. Can you? All right, you're back. Great. Back. Back. Yeah. Destiny is is a superwoman, so she she can just uh, edit that parts out. But uh, I missed everything from uh, after my joke of about bending th bending over to pick things up, and then you you started <laughs> mentioning. I heard the word hostel in there. Yeah. So the first the first training I did, I stayed in a hostel, and it was because I basically there were no Airbnb Airbnbs left, and the hotels were like extremely expensive to book that close. Mm -hmm. To the time and so I was staying in a hostel the first time and it was like uncomfortable bed like not very good sleep somebody stole some of my food I don't know on purpose or accident um how do you and, accidentally steal some oh I guess if there's when like, I mean communal water. fridge like some you know eggs all look the same I guess but um, <laughs> it's my fault I should have put my name on it but at that point I was like I'm too old for this um and then <laughs> The second time I like got on really early for my to look for an Airbnb and I was like my first my primary search was like comfortable bed. Um, okay, that makes sense. Nice hot shower that made a huge difference. Um, uh, during the aforementioned trip with with Destiny and I, we had a combined about two hundred uh, uh, three hundred pounds of e equipment. I mean, well, like all that we were going to be there for a couple of weeks only to find out that uh, the place we were going to stay was, I, I mean, I, I've seen there were no windows, the bed caved in in the middle, and I was like, no, I, I don't think I'm gonna spend my next two weeks. So we got someplace nicer, but it was a, a two hour journey with all this equipment. Oh God. So yeah. we're last we left our hero. So you've taken your instructor course and then you're like, okay, you know what's great? Let's move miles away and uh, or kilometers away and open up my own business. I think there's a little jump or a gap story there. Yeah. So, well, here's the thing. So I, I had moved to the East of England uh, when I moved over to the UK. And then I just, I went and did my instructor training like over in um, Newbury. Oh, okay. Oh, so you Bristol, sorry. I, I did the training in Bristol. I did my assessment in Newbury. So it's, it's pretty easy to, you've been to the UK, it's pretty easy to get from one end to the other on trains and that sort of thing. Um, if you know what you're doing, I guess, but um, <laughs> <laughs> if you've never been on a train before, 
Um, like I had never been on a train before I, I went to Europe and it was really confusing. Um, but now oh, I consider yeah. it like the easiest way to get around, which is really funny. Um, so yeah, I've been, I've been living in the East of England since 2016. Um, and then I kind of wasn't really doing anything with my pole certifications. Um, I was just looking for a job and I got a job at a gym. Um, and it was a, uh, like kind of a particular gym. They specialized in calisthenics. Um, so mm. a lot of exercise and it was a lot of like high bars, um, parallel bars, things like that. And when I applied, um, I had an inkling, inkling that they were looking for somebody who was doing pole. And so I applied, I sent in my thing. Um, I was like, by the way, I'm a writer. I can write a copy for you. Um, you know, I've got a lot of admin experience and, um, Good so copywriters are, are more valuable than gold. Yeah, especially these days, SEO and everything. And mm -hmm. so, and the guy that I had opened the gym was, um, he was a developer, uh, he was a web developer. And so he needed somebody to like, make everything look nice, just make it pretty, polish up the English and everything. So I was like, this is my gig. Um, okay. And by the way, I'm a pole instructor. And he was like, great, when you can you start? So I started off, I only had one pole. I was like teaching three people a class <laughs> and only doing a few classes a week. The classes were always sold out. <laughs> um, yeah, with one Because there were three spaces, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then three months in, the gym closed and we only had like a week's notice. Um, yeah, they just- Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so at that point, um, I had to really decide like, am I gonna keep like teaching pole or am I gonna look for another job? Like I basically, I just really didn't want to be unemployed. <laughs> right. I had finished my master's degree and then I had gone through a period of unemployment and that was really um, like tough, you know, it's, it's tough to be unemployed. Um, and so I started uh, looking for places to teach at and um, there were, three there were three coaches at the gym um there mm -hmm. was me and two other people and then there was one person who um was renting the space to run her own classes so she would just pay a certain amount and then there was talk of her potentially teaching ariel because she does hoop and silks and rope okay um there so was she talk didn't just own the space she also found the, the the talent put it in and, and set things up well, no, so she she was renting the space um, from the guy that, that ran the gym, um, whereas okay. I, I could use it for free for, like, my private lessons and stuff because I taught for free for a few days a week. So the mm -hmm. fees basically worked out exactly the same, right? Yeah. Um, but what happened was when the gym closed, she was, like, out of place to teach as well. So we just banded together, um, and we found some places to teach together. Mm -hmm. um, for and I did that until November ish. I so that was in May that the gym closed. We got set up for classes starting on the first of June. Um, so and then we, massive explosive success. Uh, it, we did pretty well. Yeah, I was I was really impressed actually with how quickly um, I managed to get a lot of students. A lot of my students followed me from the gym, um, and then I had people that I knew. Um, who had been interested in pole or who had done pole with me and stuff at other places. Um, yeah. And we're looking for a new place to do some pole. I had two stage poles, which I had to set up and take down every single time. Ouch. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah. And I was also, I don't have a car, so I was biking to the locations. And with then, with a couple off. of stage poles? Double uh, well, luckily they lived at the locations, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Uh, otherwise it, it looks, uh, Kind yeah, of it would have been really impressive if I could have, like, yeah, put the <laughs> <laughs> every single away. time. Yeah, um, <laughs> so I did that for about six months, um, just setting up in locations. Um, I had two locations that I was teaching out of, and then um, it got really, really cold, basically. Mm. And the location that we happened to be at at that time um, is like a, an industrial unit. It wasn't insulated. And it was like a personal training gym, which was fine um, for personal training because you can have lots of clothes on when you're doing personal training. Right. But it was like minus one degree inside the gym. And I was like trying to teach a pole class. And at that point I was like, well, can't do that anymore. Um, right. And so I approached the um, landlord of the place where I was doing my other classes. 
which um, and basically uh, asked him, you know, can, do you think I could, could we work something out? Like I've been a good customer, I've been a good tenant, um, renting mm-hmm. out space for an hour at a time, two hours at a time, whatever. Um, maybe we could clear this particular room out and I could take it over. And yeah, he agreed. So that was in November that I approached him about it. We got the floors down a couple of days before I left for a three week vacation to the States. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I came back and within <laughs> like two or three days, we got everything basically like set up just enough for classes to start. Um, and then you just kind of hit the ground running. Yeah, essentially. Um, and yeah, so it, it, it's been great. Like it's so nice to have my own space and I'm not paying much more obviously than I was like renting out for the mm-hmm. time that I was spending there, but I have the space all to myself. Like nobody comes in or out. Fantastic. Um, got all these new students, lots of lovely people. Um, and then coronavirus happens. <laughs> right. Right. So, I, I was I going to say, um, even before a coronavirus, um, Destiny and I, we lived over where I'm in Texas right now. Uh, we mm-hmm. were over in Rhode Island when we started Pulpedia. Um, and we had, we had a, a partner, uh, Priscilla Benkart, and the studio that uh, just as we moved, the studio that everybody was working at decided to, to close down. So I'm seeing a lot of these different closings, like studios pop up and pop down. Uh, there have been like several different opportunities, even here in, in Tyler, Texas. Uh, we call it the, the buckle of the Bible belt, where <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of interest, uh, not a lot of interest. There's like, it, it's a very controversial topic versus uh, everywhere else. Everybody's interested, but nobody's willing to admit that they're interested <laughs> because for, for reasons. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, even recently, somebody asked me, he's like, hey, hey, Elliot, how are you adapting to coronavirus and, and social distancing? I'm like, well, I work from home, so it's pretty much the same. And I'm an introvert. So it's pretty much the same for the sa- for the same reason. So yeah, coronavirus uh, hit, and and when how did that affect you? Like all the news and all the spread. So obviously, it took time for it to get to the UK. Um, I looked at my attendance records from even just a couple of weeks ago, and um, I I have a really small studio, only have like four poles. Um, Mm -hmm. I kind of like it that way. (laughs) Um, I'm not really big on like teaching big classes and stuff. Um, And uh, so, yeah, it's just, it's a small space. Basically, I didn't start to worry until maybe a week or so ago. And then I was like, okay, like, what am I going to need to do? And I was like, okay, well, first things first, let's reduce class sizes. I put out a thing being like, we're staying open. Everybody, please bring your own pull cloths, you know, like everybody wash your hands. So oh it's just God. been putting in sort of, you know, extra precautions and everything. And don't go around stuff. touching each other's faces. Yeah. Like don't sneeze on each other. Um, pretty basic stuff. Surprising how you have to tell people that. <laughs> I, I said, if I ever want to to walk into a food store and just have it to myself, just go around coughing, even if I like I licking things. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> everybody, I, I go into one and every I, everybody looks around and they just kind of cough into their shirt and was like, "Hey guys, yeah, that's, that's paranoid." Not a, okay, guys, all right, but but so yeah, you reduced class sizes, uh, so fewer uh, people were started to come. What or. Yeah, it had started to get like kind of low attendance, um, like Mm -hmm. the week before last. And I was like, well, this is kind of weird, like that's unusual. And I was like, I wonder, you know, what's going on uh, and if it's related to coronavirus. And then I did get a couple of texts from people saying like, hey, just to let you know, I'm self-isolating. I can't come in. Um, Oh, wow. I worked at an event there were lots of people or I've had a cough and I'm being advised to stay home from work so I obviously don't want to infect anybody um and you know obviously I told people if you're not well like and I I say this all the time like I've had to say it a lot in Jan like since January because people keep getting colds and then they come in and I'm like if you're not feeling well don't come to class like right (laughs) yeah it's it's not just you and it's it's not a um it's uh, speaking mostly from some of my friends. Look, it's not a stubbornness thing. It's it's not a 
a weakness thing of can you do it? I believe that you can do it. You can make yourself do it. But I don't want to make everybody else have to go through the same thing that you are. If you're feeling under the weather, just take a rest day. Yeah, exactly. So so anyway, yeah, that just kind of I put out that notice. Um and I've just been kind of kind of reiterating that message and then when attendance started to get really low, like I've had classes reduced to four people so that I'm the only one sharing a poll with anybody. And like one of my students is my boyfriend. Like if, if he gets coronavirus, I'm getting it too. You're right. Um, yeah. So I usually share a poll with him. Um, and then uh, I looked at the schedule and there's only like two people in each class right now, um, which I know a lot of my students, like they like to book on on Saturday or Sunday um, for the next week ahead. Um, but I've had people canceling private lessons because the schools closed um, the last few days in the UK. Right. Like they announced all schools have to close. So all of my private lessons where people have kids, they can't make it in. Um, I'm doing some Skype lessons. Um, which is which is actually a good point. I, I come from a standpoint of, of I, I own uh, several of my own small businesses. Right before coronavirus really hit, I was... Uh, planning uh, yet another event. I like to to run events. Um, prior to doing all, all SEO and online marketing, I, I was traveling on the Renaissance Fair circuit doing stage shows, oh, wow. a juggling acrobatic magician, and I, my mentor was a was a French mime. So it sounds really great when you put it on paper, but <laughs> but mostly it was me practicing magic tricks poorly and him telling me how terrible I was at it, and it, it, it worked out. It worked out. Um, Learn, being a magician's apprentice isn't as much fun as, as people would think. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, reading and self-study. So uh, n having all of this and having to shut that down, um, I also, with the funnels that I have for my business, they dried up. So I know that, that like overall just gross revenue ha has taken a hit. So I, I'm kind of curious if you're willing to share, and please tell me if you're not, like, how has it affected your studio's revenue? Like, what, what are you doing more of, having to do less of? How are you, uh, uh, what are you doing in order to, to stay whole? I know you already said that you keep, uh, that like overall bills for the space are, are kind of low, but just like, how has that affected you and what, what kind of novel solutions have you come up with? <laughs> um. Yeah, so there's definitely been people like not because they're not coming in, they're not using up their class packs. Um, a lot of my students usually come in like twice a week or more because of the classes that are offered. Um, the first thing that I had to do, unfortunately, was tell my other instructor like, hey, um, you know, there's just not the demand. I'm going to have to cancel your classes. I'm consolidating what classes I can do. So I was like kind of pushing them into as small a space as I could. So like Thursday <laughs> classes were canceled, Tuesday classes were canceled, Monday classes going online, switching, mm -hmm. you know, this class on Wednesday to a beginner class so that everybody can come on the same day. Um, so that was my first kind of plan. And then um, the next thing was I started a Patreon uh, and I'm going to be uploading a stretching video uh, after this meeting, after this interview, actually, um, mm. to that. And basically what I've asked for that is um, just if people want to access the content that I'm going to be putting up, contribute what you can, because I know that like the financial situation is tough on everyone. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I'll be talking to my landlord um, tomorrow. Um, we've kind of arranged to have a phone call about what's going on and I see what solutions we can come up with. Um, because it's going to end up hitting him as well. And I mean, yeah, has to understand. Exactly. and yeah, so, um, and obviously like with bills and stuff, you know, calling companies and saying like, Hey, like, obviously right. <laughs> some are going to need yeah. attention, things like that. Um, you can't but look from the stone. I, I've had a, a several similar conversations uh, with that, either having to cancel things, a, a lot of uh, some people being disappointed, other people being like, okay, I understand. And, yeah. Uh, um, everybody's been super supportive and understanding, like, um, you know, and like even when I was on my way home, I got um, just a notification on Instagram that uh, somebody who I kind of know tenuously through the the circus and and um, like fitness community here um, had shared uh, really like one of my better pictures from the studio Instagram on her Instagram <laughs> like being like go follow her like because she was doing it for lots of people um, 
Mm-hmm. You know, follow Jenny, Jenny's Pulse do on Instagram, like give her a like, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, to kind of get that. So I'm going to be doing some of that as well tonight, just supporting people um, who, yeah, who I'm in touch with and everything. Because I think that's kind of like, that's something that's come out of this that's really good is um, just the community support. Um, it's a small community here in Norwich. Like everybody kind of knows everybody. Um, right. And yeah, just that positivity is, is really great. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's tough financially. Um, what I said I was going to do uh, a couple of weeks ago, which I'm definitely going to be following through on now is offering to freeze everybody's memberships, um, you know, kind of until this passes. <laughs> right. Uh, and then, um, yeah, freezing class packs and memberships and everything, refunding for any classes that have to be canceled. I'm going to take as many classes online as I can. Um, so like exotic, the exotic class that I teach can obviously go online. Like that can be done in your living room. And how uh, does that, how does exactly does that work? Like, uh, how, like, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, other people are taking classes online, but how, how, how does that work uh, logistically for you? So I'm basically using my existing booking system. Um, I'm going to make the classes slightly shorter and I'm going to make them cost less because I use a credit based system. So people pay, um, you know, a certain amount for this many credits. And then that's an interesting way of doing it. So that it's kind of like a retainer. Yeah, essentially. Um, so basically my plan is to, um, use the class, the existing class schedule, just booking on as normal. Uh, and then, um, I'm just going to put the Zoom link uh, in in the class descriptions and everything um, and have people go on to the Zoom meeting. Um, mm-hmm. And then um, from there, um, sorry, I've like completely lost my train of thought. No, I, I understand. <laughs> I, I had uh, several different client calls yesterday and it was one of my days where my brain just wasn't in the game. <laughs> the rest of my body's like, yeah, yeah, let's go. My brain, I, the, I think I said, I broke my record for the number of times I had to say the word, um, that's my <laughs> thoughts. I, I would be in the middle of, of discussing, uh, the keywords and, or keyword topics. And I look outside and there's a bird. And the next thing I know, I'm describing this bird and the person is very, very confused, very confused. Oh, I know that feeling. Um, yeah, so just, I'm going to use my existing booking system and I'm just going to make classes like cheaper and a bit shorter, basically, is my plan. Um, that makes sense. One of the thing, uh, first things that uh, Destiny started to do is she has, um, now with Polpedia, and if you're watching this, I, I assume that you know of Polpedia, but uh, she started putting out uh, just kind of live streams to get people together. Uh, we have a lot of good experience with live streams with some of the other... Uh, we have a million irons and a million different fires. <laughs> so we have one on how to basically use Upwork to, to work from home, um, a, an entire online training course, and uh, one on how to learn how to draw because that's what Destiny did in a past life. Uh, I was the juggler and she, she was the artist. But with live streams, we've been seeing uh, greater and greater engagement. I mean, it's, it's not a, amazing, but it's a good place to connect. And I'm and in a funny way, even with all the social distancing, I feel like people are becoming more active within the community since yeah. they can go out and, and go to their studio as much as they're turning to online. So that in right, right now is a great time to uh, make those extra connections, contact people that you wouldn't contact normally and kind of do that working on the business, not in the business that we always say we need to do. and and sometimes get around to it. Yeah, yeah. I think like if the Patreon sort of proves like popular at all, even if it's just a group of my own students, I'm gonna um, keep going with it because I do have some students who can only get to class once a week. Um, so mm-hmm. kind of hoping to expand that and like bring it onto poll tutorials, things like that. Um, and yeah, just kind of go from there and see how things go. I'm one of those instructors who like I very much like feedback from my students. So mm-hmm. um, if they're like that class sucked to like, I never want to do that much floor work again. I'm like, okay, like we'll break it up. Um, or, you know, <laughs> like not, not that any of them would ever say something like that to me. Like they're all amazing and like so sweet. Um, and like I said, they've just been really, really supportive and it, all of them are like, I can't miss pole. Um, so right. a lot of them panicking about missing the classes and stuff. Um, I mean, it's but, such a social outlet. 
um, as well as all the exercise. You end up craving both of them. It hits so many different parts of you. Yeah, and yeah, I, I, we just have such a good atmosphere in my studio. I love it. Um, and that's also part of why I wanted to open a studio was because I really wanted to sort of preserve that, that atmosphere that we got in classes and make it more accessible for people to come. And having my own space was kind of a way to do that. Um, but yeah, a lot of it, I mean, yeah, I'm just kind of seeing how it goes and, you know, taking everybody's feedback in stride and hopefully, you know, deliver as, as good a service as I can. I'm really lucky because I do have another job. Um, and that mm -hmm. is actually um, to do with like online learning, uh, like and learning for young kids. So that's really helpful right now. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, actually uh, we, I have uh, uh, several clients and uh, we've seen almost all, all of the traffic kind of drop across all marketing channels, except for education and yeah. entertainment. Those are just uh, they're uh, just thir uh, like plus thirty percent over last week, and we're like, oh okay. Like the moment that that quarantines yeah. were announced, it suddenly spikes up because people are at home and kind of bored and looking for something to do. Which is why I actually think that your your Patreon idea and then putting that out there is is such a a, uh, uh, a great idea. And consider this an open invite to uh, to post that kind of stuff over on uh, the Pulpedia. Uh, Facebook pages, uh, so long as I clear it with, with Destiny, who's, I think, Hi. cocooned in a little blanket right now. She is, uh, she is sick with things that yesterday seemed very close to COVID-19, but today we find out is just a head cold, but it's still, oh, no, I still hear her coughing, so I know she's still good. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, it's been it's been crazy sort of how much the traffic has spiked for my other job with home learning and stuff because we offer we offer a lot of free resources to teachers all the time. Um, right. But now teachers are sort of needing us more than ever. So um, especially if it's uh, like a, a, a parent and suddenly have their kids home, keeping them occupied. Exactly. So to yeah. take a. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to run over you. Oh, no, no, you're fine. I was just saying, yeah, exactly. Like that's that's exactly what's happening as parents and teachers are kind of panicking. Like, how do I entertain them for the next 12 hours? Right. Um, I mean, it's not the same thing. I, I don't have kids yet myself, but I have a couple of very whiny cats and it's been <laughs> all nothing but rain for the past week. So, I mean, it's not the same thing, but they are very loud. They're very vocal. I can't even imagine if they could actually talk back and, and want hu uh, human interaction instead of just to, to, for me to move out of my chair so they could take a nap. <laughs> so to take a, 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 a step back, like uh, let, let's think on a, a larger scale. Um, uh, recently with uh, me joining up uh, and partnering with IPDFA um, and working on uh, as a, the, a, the president of, of America and trying to build that organization. So I've had organizations and events on my mind quite a bit lately. So what do you think that the poll community as a whole um, can do beyond, beyond like things for one studio or another studio? Like, what do you think something that we can do to increase or continue poll growth, even without poll studios open? How can we reach out to other people? And what do you think is going to keep uh, our community happy, healthy, and, and safe? Um, I mean, I think just following government guidelines. So um shortly before this this interview i got the news that i'm probably gonna have to shut my doors tonight um but oh, you know wow. what? If that keeps people safe and healthy and doesn't contribute to more problems then i'm happy to do it um yeah. obviously i don't want to shut um and my students don't want me to shut but it's what we have to do um, you know, just like I started limiting class sizes, started taking things online. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just more concerned about everybody's safety. Um, I think just, yeah, checking in with people and making sure that people around you, if they need any help, um, like sticking with poll. So if you need like a poll accountability buddy, I know that that's something that people are doing on Facebook. Um, we have a, a pollpedia poll accounting, uh, or accountability partner uh, group. Yeah, uh, everybody to it. There's, I think that's really helpful because 
I think sometimes like when something like this happens and you can't get to pole for a while, like people just sort of get out of the mentality of like, oh, it's pole time. And then they stop going to class. Um, you know, I think something that I've seen is a lot of people are offering free resources, which I understand. Um, I think everybody really wants to pull together and do that. And like, that's great on some level, but it also means that it's like taking business away from those of us who are trying to run online classes, um, mm -hmm. which I think is a fair point. Like I've, I've seen a couple of people posting about it and I think that's a fair point either way. Obviously there's lots of online resources for free. Um, that's actually a, a very interesting point. Um, a, a bit of an anecdote. Um, one of our clients, he teaches you piano. And he gets most of his traffic through uh, just a, a natural YouTube channel that he built up. And if you watch his YouTube, you'd get everything that you would get inside of his paid course. Uh, it's just better organized inside of his paid course. And what's funny is uh, even with him releasing all of that free information, the more free information he releases, the more it drums up or drives up a business uh, for, for anything. So I haven't actually seen personally from uh, across all my clients um, any correlation from free resources uh, to to harming people, which which I think is why your Patreon idea is is so very clever because it also adds on and people can, but they don't have to. That's exactly kind of where I was taking it. Is like I don't want to force people to pay for you know for resources from myself. Um, I want to offer those resources and I, I'm hesitant to do it for free. Um, right. Obviously, you know, it's, it's my rent. <laughs> it's the, students, the ability to, to keep going for everybody. And so I think it really comes down to like whatever way you can contribute, like in whatever way you're able to help, whether that's, you know, if I need help moving equipment or something like that, at the studio and you just happen to be free, um, something like that. I know that one of my studio owner friends in a different city um, just needed help like painting, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and then there's some people who are, um, you know, really financially secure who can pay for like a hundred dollars or a hundred pound of, you know, gift cards, gift vouchers, um, which they'll obviously use toward a membership late, later or for their class packs or whatever. Um, and that's really, really helpful, but obviously we're not expecting everybody to do that sort of thing. So that's why right. I said my Patreon is like, if you can contribute like a pound or two, or you can contribute 10 pounds, like whatever it's worth to you, whatever you can financially swing, like I'm happy for you to, um, to do that so that you can access that, that content. Um, Perfect. and then just, if you already have like existing like class credits and your studio is offering online classes, like you know, take advantage of those because the other thing is a lot of my fear is like less about money and more just that like my students will like get frustrated when they come back, <laughs> lose interest. Like I don't want anybody's progress to be stymied by all of this. And so a lot of what I want to do is just making sure that everybody's progress is, is kept up like while we're not able to get into the studio. Even from a flexibility and conditioning standpoint, just... Uh, because uh, to go out there, I don't, I don't want anybody who has not is not super solid with inverting and doesn't have like a million safety pads under to eat them. <laughs> don't try new tricks. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I, I've done it before. It's it's not good. It it's it's not great. I, I cracked a rib. Um, it's not fun. <gasps> Oh my goodness. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is the thing is like, I definitely could offer like regular pole classes because lots of my students do have their own poles at home. Um, like that is something that I absolutely could do. I could offer a zoom class with like eight people on their own poles, but I have no intention of doing that because of safety. Um, and I'm very much like a stickler for technique and safety. So I just, I would not want my students to be doing that right. if I'm not like, either really intently watching them for like a one-to-one -one or um you know in the room with them so I, yeah i'm i'm probably going to be um i know some of my students who have cars for instance can get into the studio for a one-to-one -one and might be interested in that if we're allowed to do that mm. uh, it's kind of not clear what like what's kosher right now um <laughs> the government. so right. I'm investigating obviously um and then some uh, students won't be comfortable, you know, doing a one-to-one -one virtually, and that's totally fine. So I'm just going to freeze their memberships based on what they what they want.
I had a, I had safety beaten into me uh, quite a bit um, in my performing days uh, because with juggling and magic, everything involves your hands. And sometimes you need to use a power uh, drill. So Asen, he, he was the, he's very French, like I said, French mime. Um, and whenever he'd do anything, he had the biggest, thickest, most protective gloves. And he's like, your, your, your hands are your job, uh, it, uh, he would tell me. Uh, yeah. And ever since then, like anything that you don't, especially from an acrobatic standpoint, anything that you don't do safely, like don't, don't do, don't do. Like you may say, I want to, I want to try this and it should be good, but it only takes like one moment, one slip, and you won't be able to do that again. Um, that's why uh, when I was uh, teaching, uh, teaching people like uh, some martial arts or we would spar and they would try to go full contact and like, this isn't good and it doesn't teach you anything. Like, like let's, let's stop this and focus more on, yeah. So uh, I'm very big on safety. I've seen a lot of people uh, really hurt themselves uh, across all different industries. I, I, uh, even uh, aside from pole with you doing uh, uh, teaching um, and working at a gym, I'm sure you've seen people get injured because they just did just a little something that they weren't supposed to do. And, and it, it just takes one moment, one little, one little slip. And uh, yeah. I'm very and big, slow measured pace. Yeah, and the thing is, is like, even with mats, and even if you've done everything right, like accidents do happen, it, it just happens, unfortunately, but obviously yeah. anything you can do to minimize your risk. So um, kind of any of the one-to-ones that I'm gonna be doing, um, like where people are using their poles, it's gonna be mostly choreography and flow, mm -hmm. uh, conditioning, that sort of thing, because I'm really not keen on people um, trying anything new really that I'm teaching them without me being there to spot them. Um, right. There's so much that you can do on pole without having to like try new crazy things that you've never done before. Um, I know a lot of people in the Polepedia group, many of them don't even have poles at home. So I'm just like, all right, well, cool. Well, let's start thinking about pole, uh, like floor routines. What are yeah. some nice, easy yeah. body weight floor routines to, to get the muscles moving, keep flexibility going and, uh, I don't know. Let's have a little dance and a little jive. Yeah. On my, um, so like on my Monday classes, I had put like online, um, on them so that everybody kind of knew which ones were going online, which ones weren't. And I put like online poll and then in parentheses, less class, um, yeah. <laughs> people they don't need a poll to do it. And then, um, kind of just letting everybody know that I'm doing one-to-ones for people with polls or, or without, like, I'm happy to do that. But like, Personally, I, I think that, you know, offering your regular classes is going to be the best thing because most of my students, for instance, when they come to flexibility, they've come to my flexibility class probably 20 times, let's say some of them in the last like several months. It's not that I'm teaching them anything new about getting into their right. or back bends. It's just an accountability thing. And, you know, they're paying for my instruction and my tips and everything like that. Um, but it's mostly just, they want to, they want to be held accountable and they want to come and socialize and that sort of thing. And so that's kind of more what it's about is like, yes, it is keeping you, you know, conditioned and, and working towards your goals and stuff, but it's also just about, yeah, accountability. And there's lots of people who, and I'm definitely one of them. I have to be paying for stuff in order to, Oh yeah. if I've, if I've booked a class, like I will go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Especially with owning your own business, every single day is uh, both a day on and a day off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, that's kind of where I'm coming at it, I guess. All right. Um, well, uh, I'm happy to chat with you after this, but I think I'm going to kind of wrap up this interview. Are there any last thoughts you want to give out to the poll community? Stay safe, stay home if you are not feeling well, and please just abide by government guidelines. And yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Good well, thank time. you very much for your, your time. And uh, I, well, I hope to chat with you on another one of these interviews again soon. All right. Have a good one.